Uh, hi, my name is Steve Swatton. I'm the CEO of Copper Corp. Uh, Copper Corp is a company which is based in Vancouver on the TSX, and we have asset an asset in uh, Tasmania. It's an iron oxide, copper gold, uh, up in the northwest um, corner of Tasmania. And we're currently exploring, and we just released today our first four holes, um, and we have another seven that are in the lab, and we expect to be putting out more news, and it's uh, it's good news. Good to have you um, back, Steve. Um, I think last time I talked, you were um, doing some work um, with K2. Um, you're still a director there, but you are now, seem to be down in Tasmania. Now, um, for those who don't know much about that part of the world, I include myself, um, Tasmania is not exactly the uh, mining hotspot, is it? Uh, well, you'd be surprised, Matt. It, it kind of is. Um, there's about 10 past and current operating mines in the western part of Tasmania. And it's quite incredible where two thirds of the island is totally off limits and it's a beautiful part of the world. And then the Northwest area, there are some world-class mines like uh, Henty and, and uh, Mount Lyle. Mount Lyle's 2 million tons of copper. And it, it's, a, it's a thriving mining area actually, an exploration area. And it produces more than 50% of the revenue for the Tasmanian state. So it's a very important part of the economy. And not a lot of people know that, you know, it, it's just one of those things where everybody assumes that it's kind of off limits. And when I was in BHP, we didn't do a lot of exploration, but we, we gave a nod to Tasmania. But in fact, when you get down there, there's a Renison tin mine is another famous one. It's, it's a big mining area. So yeah, it's, it's not what you might perceive it to be. No, okay, I've forgotten about Martin Lyle um, and, and, uh, and the copper. Um, let, let's talk about what, you know, okay, so th this, this mining goes on there. So in terms of infrastructure, I mean, is, is that well supported? Have you got, the, um, you know, the uh, skilled staff necessary to be able to work down there? I mean, tell us a bit, a bit about on the ground. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a mining area. It's been mined since the mid-1800s. Uh, initially, they went in for silver. And then it's a kind of multi-commodity. It's a kind of really interesting area, and that has a little bit of everything. It's copper, tin, gold, um, and even you know near us is a manganese mine as well. Look, the northwest area has been deemed a, a mining and exploration area, but the infrastructure is pretty good. Within 20 kilometers, we have a wind farm and we have a hydropower. I mean, there are limited roads in the area, but like in you know remote parts of Canada, there's little. Uh, forestry tracks all over the place. Um, dealing with uh, local government is uh, the MRT. It's called. It is reasonably straightforward, and um, we get our drill permits and our uh, our um, uh, our permits to um, build roads in, in a timely fashion, which is a little unlike my last job in California, as, as you remember. So it, it, it's a little easier to work, and also copper is um, something that is extremely valuable right now. And as you know. Matt, most of the copper is mined currently in areas which have a little bit of a, a question mark against them. I mean, you know, Chile, Peru, uh, next one would be um, Congo, and then uh, China and uh, United States. All of them have their own issues. Um, so Australia is looking pretty good by comparison with some of these other countries that produce most of the world's copper. It's, yeah, it's kind of interesting times at the moment. We, we've been having these talks um, here down at, uh, in Darba, down in Cape Town about what tier one jurisdictions look like anymore or you know what what you know first yeah, world looks like anymore really in terms changed. of mining it, it really has in the last i'd, I'd say 12 months on argue obviously but geopolitically politically because of you know Rus russia ukraine but also more importantly in terms of licensing um and permitting times in north america um and you know well you could argue supportive governments maybe the wrong phrase in, in those jurisdictions so so is, is are you saying tasmania is a little bit like um mainland australia in terms of when it comes to the mining rule of law and attitude towards mining absolutely um it's so important to the uh, revenue for the state you know the the other, the other industries the fishing farming and mining that's the three main ones that are there and uh, they just changed state premier there recently. Very supportive. Everything seems to be, I mean, like heaven forbid that you step outside of your area of, of interest, but providing you within it, like Zian, which is our local town, which we operate out of, every single person is either directly or indirectly related to exploration and mining. It's a bit like some of the Northern BC towns or, or you know, Northern Ontario. It's, it, it really is that way. And I, I didn't expect it myself but it really is that way.
Okay, well, look, let's, let's talk about what you've got, because you talked about you've got three holes, four more coming. I can tell us about that in a second, but first we're just going to start out with, what, you know, what, what is iron oxide, copper, gold? It's not a common, commonly used phrase. Yeah, iron oxide, copper, gold is, is one of the four main copper groups. I won't go into them. I mean, you know, the biggest one, porphyry, obviously. But it's, um, you know, the largest, one of the largest copper mines in the world um, at the moment is um, Olympic Dam. It's, it's not a copper mine per se, it's a uranium mine, but it's 9 billion tons of 0.8% copper and uh, 0.3 gold. And uh, it's, it's the largest of the, of the group of iron oxide copper golds. Another one you might be familiar with is Candelaria in, in Chile. And then there's the, the very large um, area of Carajás in Brazil. These things can be absolutely huge. I mean, they tend to be lower, if you like, a slightly lower grade than some, some of the higher grade porphyries. But, you know, an interesting statistic is, is that in 2016, the average grade of copper being mined was 1%. It's now, well, in 2016, uh, from 2010, sorry, is 1%. 2016, it went down to 0.7. I wouldn't like to know what it is now. And if you look at the grade of intersection that we've got, which is 43 meters of 0.6%, we're probably in the in the ballpark of what is considered pretty economic now. I mean, you know, the demands for copper have gone up incredibly, but there's so few high grade copper, large copper mines in the world actually being explored at the moment. So and you know, part of the reason for me getting involved in iron oxide, copper, gold, it's not a traditional uh, known copper, but there are a lot of them around the world. And a lot of people, you know, are, are more familiar with other types, but it, it's a significant class. And in fact, the Gaula Craton has two or three mines, operating mines in there, uh, which include uh, Prominent Hill and Carpentaria. So these are large mines and Ernest Henry as well up in uh, northern um, Australia. I mean, Australia is not known for its porphyries. It's known for iron oxide, copper, golds. So I guess what you're telling me is to say that just because you haven't heard of it doesn't mean that we're going to be technically stumped further down the line. It's a well understood um, concept and the ability to extract um, minerals from it or metals from it is, should be easy. You're absolutely right. I mean, when I when I was uh, at university, which, you know, was a long time ago, um, they, they were just being discovered and just being talked about. And now a lot of people, more people know about them. They're becoming a class unto themselves, which are not to be underestimated. So, look, it, it, it's one of those ones where we're living and learning. The nice thing about them, though, it has rare earths, it has cobalt, and it has gold. I mean, these are three elements that a lot of people are looking for right now. Now, whether you're going to get them in economic value uh, quantities, nobody really knows. It's a, it's a kind of an oddball class of copper deposits, which may well have a surprise. Our biggest um, trace element that we look for is cobalt in ours. I mean, cobalt is extremely valuable right now. Now, they're not at economic levels, but who knows? I mean, we've got 600 meters of mineralization at the moment, another... 400 meters we've identified and um look we've we've hitting up to one percent copper close to surface so you know i think the indications are there we have 100 kilometers of strike in northwest tasmania of the same mineral okay you know i was about, I was about, I was about to ask you what what, what, what is, sorry i know you just again come, come on board but what is it that you've got what did you walk into and maybe we lead on to the drilling in a second but um, when you walked into this thing, it must have had some potential to kind of you know get your your attention. Well, what what appealed to me about it was the fact that it, it's a regional, it's a district scale sized um, property that they've taken a hundred kilometers of mineralization. In the middle of it is Savage River, which is five hundred million tons of point of uh, uh, of forty seven percent iron DTR, which is uh, Davis tube recovery. It's just the way that they measure it. Look, this is this is the sort of, if you like, the jewel in the crown of this area, but nobody really recognized it as an IOCG province. Now that we've recognized it, and it looks like the University of Tasmania are also endorsing the fact that this whole 100 kilometers has the potential to have it. Now, you'd ask yourself, well, okay, well, everybody kind of knew it was there from the past. It's a, it's a Cambrian Proterozoic belt that's been well studied. But when you go there, Matt, it's almost impenetrable jungle in a lot of it. I've, I've never seen a, 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 an, a, an area like it. Tasmania on the western side 
has got extremely dense jungle. On the eastern side, it looks like southern UK, rolling hills, dairy herds, and everything else. So you can understand that it hasn't had the amount of exploration it'd expect. It's, it's harder bush than northern Canada, anything I've seen in Africa, on western Tasmania. Absolutely impregnable. But, right, but of course, is, is, that a good thing or, is that a good thing or a bad thing in terms of like, well, it's explored? The great thing is, is that technology's moved on, Matt, and we have geochemistry on the ground, people who can get through. And also we have geophysics and where we've got coincident uh, mag and gravity right now, we're finding mineralization. Well, this was airborne stuff, most of it, right? They wouldn't have had that even 50, 60 years ago, the, the, the quality of data that we have now. Well, tell, tell me about the money situation. Obviously, um, you know where you so, so, yeah, somewhere between 20, 23, 25 million market cap. The market's really kind of been ha hammering at the juniors for the last five, six weeks. Uh, you know, across the board, irrespective of who you are. Yeah, we're still doing better than Rio Tint percentage wise. Yeah, go on. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, it's it, 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 it's having no respect for any any anyone uh, by name. That's for sure. Look, you, you you've got a couple of projects, right? And um, you know, at this level, you got to you, you you know. You have a little bit cash constrained. You've got to be careful how you're spending your money, where you spend your money. So you've got Al Alpine and Skyland. Um, tell us, uh, tell us about where you are with the capital at the moment, and you know what you're doing with it. Well, we've got nearly nine million in the bank. Um, we're well cashed up. We our burn rate is relatively low. We have a small team of geologists in Tasmania, and we've just got two of us here in the office. And we've got some of the um, you know the directors and and uh, advisors are not taking salary. So. Look, our burn rate is relatively low for a, a company which is doing quite a bit on the ground. I mean, we've got one drill on site and we're actually trying to acquire a second one. And we're increasing our, uh, uh, our drilling from four point uh, from uh, 4,200 meters to 10,000 meters. So, look, uh, we, we're not too concerned about the cash situation right now, simply because we have about three or four years of, of working capital ahead of us. I mean, at the moment... Um, uh, um, the the biggest impediment we have is the time between putting the assay, uh, putting the rocks into the assay lab and the recovery. I mean, sometimes we've had three months, four months turnaround time. It's kind of ridiculous. How can you plan programs effectively when you got that level of? So we got the two projects as you mentioned, Skyline and the uh, well, we're calling it the AMC now, the Alpine, the AMC. Because it was all getting a bit confusing with names, but. Um, and uh, look, uh, we've got a drill program possibly planned in the future for the skyline, but we do need two drills to keep the news flow going. Um, we, we understand that the labs will be improving their turnaround time, but we've been somewhat hampered. So um, I'm not sure if that's answer your question, but yes, we have enough cash. Burn rate is relatively low. And, uh, you know, we, we've we're trying to step up with another drill. Okay, so you, you see, you've seen a few holes um, um, come through now. Obviously, you're, you're pleased with what, what that's showing you. So just in terms of what we, retail investors, need to look out for from you, giving you the capital to do what you want to do, what, what are we going to see for, for the next six months? Well, the next six months, you're going to see at least another seven holes being released. We've got another 6,000 meters of planned and drilling ahead of us and hopefully if the turnaround times are quicker than they are right now we'll be putting out news on a regular basis and if we continue to have results like we have right now we're certainly onto something honestly matt what we're doing is because there's already been drill holes in the past we're on hole uh 20 uh 32 right now we've already got the the, the results of the previous drilling we're already putting a rough resource estimate around what we already have at half a percent type level material. So look, it's looking promising. I'm not, I'm not for one minute suggesting we have any, anything that's an economic resource, but we're in the right, right ballpark. If you think to yourself, I mean, Carpentaria right now is a billion tons at 0.57 and we're intersecting 0.6 right off the bat. It's not a bad start. It's not. It's not a bad start. Um, you know, it, it, things things don't always go according to plan. But you know, so far you, you seem to be doing a good job of it. Um, can you just um, give me a little um, insight to the rest of the, the the team? Obviously, you know, we know, we've known each other for a while. But who else is in this? Um, yeah, it, Craig Roberts is uh, a guy that I've basically worked uh, on and off with, and I've known for about twenty five years. He's a mining engineer. Uh, we have. Uh, uh, one of our advisors is Doug Kerwin. I'm pretty sure you, a lot of people are familiar with him, and he he um, is a regular. Uh, we have these weekly calls, and he's regularly on those weekly calls. 
we have um, a guy called um, Sam Garrett, who's um, an Australian who's discovered quite a few different assets, and one in particular in, in uh, Indonesia. Um, we have Aaron uh, Kay. He's a marketing guy uh, on our side, and he's also a um, venture capitalist who's put quite a lot of money into other types of deals. And uh, we have Owen Sedin, who um, used to be a banker from uh, from in London. So, yeah, we have a fairly high-profile team. And um, um, I would say that the geological team and the, the guys that are ex- extremely significant, I mean, one of the people that we have working for us is a friend of mine commented, because a friend of mine in Hobart commented, you really need to have good people down there because so few people know the assets of Tasmania. And when I mentioned the individual who's working for us, he says, oh, that's one of the five people that I would recommend. So, you know, so I think we have the right team down there. Um, very dedicated geological staff. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really encouraged by what I see. What, what we're doing is we've got a district size asset, potentially, a district size area are looking for an asset that everybody wants in an area that allows you to do mining where we have renewable energy within 20 kilometers. It, it's kind of like a, a nice place to be. And also, you know, Australia is very extremely mining friendly. We were just talking earlier about, you know, the uh, jurisdiction of the world. What is, what is a first class? What's, what is, what, where, where do anybody go right now? I mean, it's not that anywhere's got better. It's just a lot of places got worse. Australia is looking incredibly good by international standards of places to be operating.